Well, done. well done. I'm on mute. <laughs> it's it's the it's the quote of 2020. It's uh, you're on mute. So I, I love that you've shown up in a thematic outfit. It's I know when we did our call much earlier in this year, you showed up also in a thematic outfit. I believe that was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, testing my knowledge of dinosaurs, I'm going to say this is a. It looks like a I don't know a Stegosaurus. So I think I only know those two dinosaurs, but but it looks Honestly, awesome. I, I I don't know, but I'm going to come out of this in a second. But it's huge. <laughs> That's awesome. uh, just give me one second. Um, no uh, problem. Uh, yeah, this is this is the joys of, of being in these things. Ah, there we go. At least I'm out. How are you, sir? Very good. How are you, sir? Good. I'm good. I love your T-shirt. Oh, thank you very much. It's uh, you know celebrating such a great store, and um, you know those guys just are amazing. So. Um, how are you doing? I'm really well, George. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm so pleased to be talking to you. I know the idea is for us today to go through uh, a review of 2020, uh, to, think, to, to discuss all the things that we love best about the year. Maybe we could even talk about the couple of things we didn't like so much during the year. I mean, there's some, you know, there's some uh, overarching issues, I, I would imagine, but, uh, but in maybe so those maybe the small things that irritated us and and just to catch up you know it's it's the last uh, yeah. it's the last Zoom of the year for me so it's it's a pleasure to be doing it with you so first you of know, all I loved your collaboration with Colette oh thank is, you it's such a dope watch man it, it was awesome well I think I'm sporting the uh, the t-shirt for it but uh, honestly um, you know when we talk about this year. You know, so, um, I was with a cyclist the other day and we were going out on a big cycle ride. And he said to me, he said, this year feels like we're going up a hill. And every time that you think you're hitting the top, you're going to a switch back and you're coming back again. And you're going up and up and up. And I, and I just thought, actually, that describes it well. We're going, to, we're going to hit the top of this hill and we're going to hit, see that wonderful view or the sunshine. But it's yes. just it's taking a bit longer to get there. That's and so I think funny. that's. That's kind of, it was just like, wow, actually, for the cyclist to say that, I was like, damn, you're cool. Absolutely. You know, it's funny that, that he said that because um, I've actually experienced that before. So, yeah. you know, back in 20, um, 2012, I I'd, I'd asked George Kern, um, hey, I hear you do this this bicycle race around Switzerland every year. It's called yes. Tour, right? Yes. Um, and it's a 2,000 like, uh, kilometer nonstop race around the Swiss Alps. Yeah, uh, and, and I said, like, I'd love to write an article about it because, you know, I like cycling. And he said, way, the only way for you to write this article is for you to actually experience the race from the perspective of someone riding in it. Oh, so, my God. And, and this race was full of mishaps, of course. Uh, uh, I, I felt I came off my bike in the prologue. I shan't even go into the, the, the rookie mistake I made related to that. Um, but then I remember he gave me one of the steepest legs. And, I, I, um, and I, I told him, you know, George, I live in Singapore where we have zero elevation right like uh and i try to go to like a car park a circular car park and kind of ride up the ramps and he, he gave me this 15 kilometer climb in the alps which was like nothing i'd ever experienced before and it was exactly that experience so, so i had perspective on it it was like going over you know one hill and thinking that you're you're done with the climb but yeah. only to realize you've got so much further and somewhat you know and, and then happening over and over again and at some point i was actually thinking of like uh how do I get myself out of this situation? Because I'm experiencing so much pain, but I don't want to stop because if I stop, first of all, um, it will be, you know, deeply humiliating. And, you know, I would consider myself to be a big pussy, but also I would never be able to get onto my bike again. Right. And, yeah. and I, at one point I was thinking the only thing I can come up with is I'm just going to have to cycle off the mountain. <laughs> oh my God. because when cyclists die in the middle of riding like you know tom yeah. simpson like you know right like like uh you, yeah, you, yeah, are you it was going through your mind you're like how yeah, do i yeah. get off this you're a hero so I, I was just about to do that and it's almost as if they could read my mind they're like okay this time we're not joking it really is almost at the end and so that, that got me through it but that was, that's a lot like 2020 but how you know how did you because i think you've been a great sort of beacon of positivity this year right you know, I love the whole series of George asks and so on, but like, what's the year been for you? What were your, you know, the things that made you happiest and it can be watches or it could be moments. And what were the things that maybe pissed you off the most? Do you know, I'd say to you is 
this year has been about crescendos of little kind of kind of delights you know what you're doing what you kind of came out with I mean if you think about the launches you've done the launches I think you've done time and tide have done everyone has done something amazing and then you think about the brands that have knocked it out of the park some that have gone to sleep but some that really have knocked it out of the park I mean Reynald with that Omega um, Snoopy I mean like you've got one I freaking am jealous of you uh, that for me is like one of the badass um, speedmasters. Uh, I also think that the gangster move that he did was to do a, a year or do a um, non-limited edition, oh, and I God. thought that that was just like literally the, the ultimate gangster move of 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 2020. Um, and then what else would I say? Um, you know, the delights. Honestly, spending time with my family has been really really nice. Um, you know, just being actually able to spend some time and, and reflect, looking through everything that I've got in my life and going, you know, I don't need anything more. I know that sounds strange, um, apart from every time someone launches something and then I'm like, oh, shiny, shiny object. Um, so, you know, that's that's happened a few times recently. Um, and, you know, when you're saying the things that piss me off, um, you know, nothing's really pissed me off. Um, you know, because I think if you if you're pissed off with something, I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm looking at the things that piss me off. You know, nothing. I, I look at things like um, Nick Falks and the Falks and Sons cigars. I mean, that for me, like what a great you know, you say that I you and I start, did this video thing when we started off. But then, you know, the knockout blow from Nick, I'm like. You know, that for me is my delight on the weekend. You know, when that comes in on a Sunday, I'm like going, yes, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, totally you know, I, I, I love, um, well, I love the idea of this year, um, everyone's friendships kind of deepened, you know, the really yeah. meaningful deepened. And I think that, you know, Nick's friendship with his sons is, a, is you know, you look at that and you can tell, I mean, and the, I guess the one they don't see, so Max is his son that's on camera yeah. with him, who's trained as a, a cigar sommelier, who's, who's a very um, accomplished uh, cigar sommelier. Uh, but his son, Freddie, is the guy that's shooting everything as well. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, Nick and his two sons. And the thing that I get from there beyond the humor, be, beyond the sort of erudition um, uh, is, is the fact that there's a lot of love going on there. You know what I mean? Like there's a real affection for his father, for, from the father for his sons and from Max for his dad. And, you know, I think resonating from behind the camera from Freddie as well. And I really dig that. And I would say a lot of the collaborations that I saw this year are watches that affected me because of the affection that underlied it. I think one of the ones that was really clear for me was, you know, how much uh, you and Andrew from Time and Tide are really just, you know, they, you guys get on like a house on fire and you're both like, you know, just genuinely good dudes. And I think that that watch and that launch um, uh, was was really uh, was was really resonated with me. So that, congratulations on that mm. one. Uh. Look, that was a hell of a lot of fun. And that wouldn't have happened without what's happened. You know, communication, travel. I think I would have waited till, till the next time I was in Australia. And, you know, this was like, no, let's get it done. Um, you know, my relationship with Black Badge has been bloody amazing this year as well. You know, you think and you think about the oddball watch, you know, way, way back, you know, you I, I mean, you forget what's gone on this year. And this year has been like literally like like bang, 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 bang. And it really has. I mean, you know, when we were talking to Andrew, we were talking about the, you know, we thought the Australian fires was, you know, 2019 and it was 2020. I was like, freaking hell, you know. And that's the that's the most crazy thing that's happened this year is like this year has been one of the shortest, longest years that we've ever gone through. Yeah. You know, it was uh, I forget you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, it was the Australian bushfires was the prelude to the, the fuck up of yeah. 2020, you know, and and, uh, and and well, I think the, the thing that was really impressive to me, you know, related to that was Andrew and time and time responded immediately. Yeah. And here you guys have, you know, um, a, you're, you're a, a watch, you know, journalist or watch editorial, you know, entity. And they decided, well, let's raise some money for this because just to pitch in, right, and to, and to, yeah. to galvanize the community. And, and they did. And they did an amazing job. Um, they even sold 
Adam Clayton from U2's freaking watch, man, from yeah. it was a Moser, which was amazing, right? And and uh and then that was really, you know, what kind of inspired me um to to jump into this this whole you know COVID solidarity auction uh and then reach out to the brands basically. And it was it was the brands that a hundred percent made that auction, mm-hmm. you know, and and one you know brand that I I don't mention enough, uh it was Van Cleef and Arpels, right? Like they yes. jumped and and that one single watch, I think, was like went for like fifty thousand U.S. dollars, which you know, in the context of two hundred eighty thousand dollars, that's a huge difference, right, um, for us. So that and they came, they you know, they just saw the the, the what I'd written, and they were like, "Dude, this is amazing," um, and they wanted to jump in. And for me, it was amazing that they did. And it was like it was other brands who gave us super dope stuff, like like uh, Carl Friedrich Schweifler from Chopar giving the watch that Ryan Reynolds was wearing in you know eight underground. Right. Um, like I I, I kind of was bidding on that, so. I, <laughs> right. I, 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 I missed out, but I was I was bidding on it. It was one of those uh, that I was like, hey, this would be so awesome. Um, and But, you know, but, I think also that was the awesome thing about it. But your watch went for crazy money, right? Um, I mean, I think if you look at it relative to the retail price of, of a Snoopy, you know, this yeah. watch went for like 300% the normal, you know, price yeah. of a Snoopy. And it was, it was, I think, a demonstration also that people were looking for kind of talismans that yeah. made them feel uplifted. And I think, you know, when you are a, a uh, you know, when you're looking at, at, at watches that have a beautiful sort of pink and green expression, where it's just, you look at it and you're like, wow, that makes me feel happy. You know, it, it was that yeah. exactly the type of watch, right? And, and, and that was the thing is, I think what you asked me at the beginning, what made me happy and what made me sad, you know, I think that was the thing is that we are looking for happiness. I mean, yes. let's throw that back on you. What, did, what made you happy and what made you sad this year? What were the uh, things that like really like like were like, hey, that was awesome. And what was what was the things that you're like, oh fuck, you know, this okay. is dreadful. A couple of collabs so I want to shout out. Like um, I want to say the Moser and MBNF watches were fucking killer. Yeah. I love also because chromatically they were so uplifting in terms of the colorway, yeah. right? Um, and then uh, I, I have to say Kudoki, uh, this like small German brand, like they that that is amusing because their movement um, is shaped rather phallically, but also on the dial side, their watches are so beautiful. And the K2, which is a uh, AM or night day and night watch uh, is, is absolutely stunning. Um, Supra Neva, man, uh, with the Moomin watch. Yes, that right? dial is unreal. It's fucking insane. And and it took me a while to, for, for me to realize that I think that that was the watch that I love the most that I didn't buy. And I really wish I'd bought it now because I don't think he, I think he only made like 75 of those watches. Um, so if you're listening to that, you know, bro, uh, congratulations because Moomin was, it was so, again, so uplifting and so. Also you, way once one. <laughs> it was so beautiful uh, and poetic uh, as well. And I kind of like, okay, so the thing that, the other thing that I really love this year um, and I think it, it is, was the last episode of the Mandalorian. So I don't know if you've seen this. Yes. Right. Yes. So because this is this is the year where everyone is really needing, you know, like f- to be the feeling of, of that that good is tr- going to triumph over evil, you know, yeah. just to reinforce that that sort of like mythical archetype for us somehow. Just tell us tell us to, everything's going to be OK. Right. Because it hasn't been OK for a long ass time. And then you watch the last episode of The Mandalorian and you're like, oh, man, these guys are fucked. You know, the, the dark um, troopers are going to fucking annihilate them. And then a single X-Wing comes in, right? I, and you're just like, you're, you're almost like this. You're just like, you want ACDC to come on board. And you're just like, yes, this is what, this Actually, is my. Actually, that would be a great remix of that. If someone, yes, you know, um, yeah. back in black, right? Because he's wearing yeah. all black. Because he's wearing That's his, what uh, I mean. It's just like, right? you, you want right. an AC. To, it, it was just like, boom. I, I, I love that. That was just yes. like. That and then I've been watching fan reaction videos to this episode. Mm. And if you, know, you check it out on YouTube, it's, 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 it's quite, it actually, it makes me very emotional. I start tearing up because they're tearing up, you know? Um, and when the moment, because everyone's like, oh, no, but it can't be. Who's it going to be? <laughs> no. And the moment they see a green lightsaber, right? Because Luke's yeah. lightsaber is green. Everyone just loses their shit. But then they're like, no, 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 no. But check his hands because, you know, he gets, he's missing a hand, yeah. right? And they see his hand, his right hand's gloved. And they're like, and then they lose their minds. And then that moment in the end where the Mandalorian kind of reveals his face to uh, Grogu, right? Or AKA Baby Yoda. 
uh, is so touching to me. So that was super uplifting to me. And I, I, I'm telling Supper now that, uh, now that uh, he, he should make a Baby Yoda watch in the same style as Moomin. You know, <laughs> like, yes. that, would be, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, so that, that was super uplifting. And, and that was, it was a really important series for me because of that, because it showed me or reinforced to me and not just me, but fans around the world that, that you know, good can triumph over evil. Do you know, I've got to watch it again because my son um, and I watched the whole series, uh, series one and series two. And at the end of it, my son was like, literally like hitting me going, have you seen, watch, watch, watch. And I'm like going, uh, I'm trying to focus, but like literally someone's going like this going, hey, look, it's this, it's this. So yeah, no, I, 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 it was... Uh, it was kind of, um, what pissed you off this year? What was the thing that you were just like, and apart from COVID, what was the thing that you were just like, this, this really bugs me? So I would say um, intolerance, right? Uh, you know, the thing is, and you know, I, I, I was, I kind of helped to, to reveal that I might perhaps be a candidate as being horological dictionary. I'm just joking. Of course, you know, everyone knows it's actually Max Buser, but I, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, uh, writing an article in the next issue of the magazine about why I feel there's a real place for watch humor and those, you know, kind of watch, um, you know, like, I memes, guess, memes. Yeah. It's, and some of which are very intelligent and have amazing production value, yeah. like, like Hodonkey, uh, some of which are, you know, very cutting, like shame on wrist, but all of which I feel are constructive in that. You know, like Marcus Aurelius used to walk around with a guy that would whisper into his ear, you're just a man, right? And I think that sometimes it's good for us to kind of, you know, be humbled a little bit. What I do feel like these guys need to do is also not just say what they don't like, but promote things that they like as well. Because I think that in some ways takes more courage than to, cr to critique, right? No, I, 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 I it's something out of left field. Um, but, uh, but what I don't like is just when people just gang up and just are mean for no reason, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that that, you know, the internet or social media became a very intolerant place this year as well. Right. Like everyone saw, you know, like that related to like the travel clock, for example, you know, like, yeah. and it was like, like, dude, I get it. Right. It's me. It's the wrong product. Uh, this is no disrespect to, to you know, Ben um, and to Hodinkee. I mean, I, I, like everyone else, have to be a huge admirer of his, especially considering, you know, the valuation What's happened? Yeah. he's gotten himself and the investment from, you know, L, uh, LVMH's venture capital um, uh, division. But it was, yeah, he, and it was the wrong product and it was clearly the wrong price. And it was, but the level to, and, and there was some funny shit, right? Like there was, yeah. it was funny when some dude created the Hodinki Travel Clock's own Instagram page. Like that was kind of funny, right? But then, but then like, and you know, but but some of the, some shit was just mean, right? And, and there's no reason to be that mean. And I was trying to figure out what, why was it this year? And okay, I'll give you another example. When I came out, um, in support of the Black Lives Matters protests, you know, in the yeah. United States, and I would I do it again, I because I, yeah. I completely support the, what you know. And you would you were reposting Michael, um, the guy did, yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I mean, like, and yeah, no, I, 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 you were so kind of like I was, I was watching it, and I was just like, it was, it was amazing. You were yeah, doing well, you what know, you know. I just felt that it was my responsibility to say, I, I feel this is um, uh, wrong and what's happened is wrong. And I think that that, that, that change needs to happen, you know, and, and you can extrapolate that however you want. I certainly don't condone the, viol the, the violence and the looting on either side, but at the same time, I 100% support BLM and, and, I, and I feel that it was, uh, I, and actually I felt really proud of an entire generation, not just in the United States or around the world that rose up and said that, you know, um, uh, racial inequality is, it can, yeah. can, you know, it has, has to be um, eliminated or, you know, but anyway, then I got like a ton of fucking hate related to that as well, which I think by this point, if you're following my Instagram page, you know, that's probably the wrong place for you if you're, you know, a white supremacist or what have you. Not that I have an issue with you being a white supremacist. And I feel that that's totally cool if you want to be right. Um, but but, uh, you know, that, that that's it. You know, I think it's it's funny also because I think that people sometimes just don't take the time to actually try to relate to one another before they decide that they want to fucking hate each other. You know, like I actually lived for a year in Montana. 
right? And I, I'm pretty sure I was, uh, so I was working in, a, in Montana's uh, largest commercial cattle ranch. And Ooh. I was living in the bunkhouse and, you know, doing fucking ranch hand shit, you know, like quite ineptly many times because, you know, I didn't know how to operate. Uh, you were in your own Ralph Wren story. <laughs> Well, that's why I went, because I, I was so enamored with the whole Ralph Lauren mythology. It's like, I got to get, get out to the American West. And I also, as a Chinese guy, I wanted to have carte blanche to wear cowboy boots anytime I wanted. So that if anyone ever asks me, hey, you're wearing cowboy boots, I'll be like, yeah, I worked on a ranch in Montana. Did you, motherfucker? Right? So, so, so but I, I, I got on like super well with everyone there, you know, and, and i pretty sure I was like the first Asian dude anyone had ever seen. Possibly a lot of them thought I was Native American for like a good couple of weeks because they kept asking, you know, what tribe are you from? And I'm like, it's very Eastern, right? It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> you know? but, but it was like, I think that if you try to just relate to people and listen to them, right, there's, what are you going to be angry about, right? It's just like, you can, you know, have a couple of beers and you guys are having fun. And then you get to certain points where obviously your perspectives diverge. But that doesn't mean you've got to hate each other. And I think that that was so intolerance, I think, was the thing that I disliked the most. And I, I feel that I hope that we can get over uh, in the future. You know, I got a new card this year just because of this was if I was everyone's cup of tea, I'd be a mug. Right. And and I and it, it really is that thing of, you know, I'm never going to be everyone's cup of tea. I'm not, you know, we're not going to be a vanilla type person. What I mean is that we're not going to be the most simplest thing where we're going to please everyone. And especially with design or with anything that we're putting out there, you know, and we've, we've got to be our own person and, you know, put out love. You know, I, 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 I did a, a Peloton Beatles ride and the oh, whole wow. thing, the whole thing was all about love. And I just thought, honestly, all the Beatles songs, you know, you and I were talking about what's getting us up. What, what are the songs that are happening you know, and I was calling, talking about Camilla Yabra and I was talking about all these things. And I was just like, actually, if you listen to so many of the Beatles songs, you know, Blackbird, the history of Blackbird, you know, you go, oh, my God, this could be relevant today. You know, it, everything about it, you just go, wow, that's amazing. You know, George, I'm, I'm really glad you said that because, you know, it's funny, too, because I guess when I was a young, younger guy, you know, and I had like artistic delusions of wanting to, you know, or, you know, write um, fiction or, or <laughs> semi autobiographical fiction, um, or, or or work in the film industry. I always felt that I, you know, to be meaningful, you had to be dark, right? Yeah. And and I feel, and there was certainly a period for that. I think you know the social social realist period in the America in America in the seventies was an amazing time for cinema, but. We forget that there's no um, reason to be dark all the fucking time. And I think the thing that you learn as you grow up is like, just grow the fuck up and smile and be fucking happy. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's like, a, I, you know, I look at Mandalorian and I look at Game of Thrones. Right. And, and I love Game of Thrones. But that last, you know, couple of episodes was the biggest fucking downer in the world. Yeah. Right. And it was almost like they were like, oh, but, you know, we've grown up in an environment that's so cynical that we have to also believe that, you know, fairy tales don't happen. And I'm like, fuck you, dude. I yeah. want fairy tales to happen. You know what I had to do after that? I had to watch The Prince's Bride, right? Because I was like, all right, motherfucker, if you're not going to give me a happy ending, I'm going to go someplace, you know, where I will find one, right? And I, I want that joy. No, it, but it's, you know, you're talking about TV shows, you know. There's been some knockout TV shows. Queen's Gambit for me was one of those that you, you just go from everything from the styling to to the to even the ending. I was just like, loved it. Okay, boom, 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 boom. And it was a fuck up, but it wasn't a fuck up. And everything was like, and, you know, the amount of people that are playing chess. And, you know, I've been playing chess online with so many people and then. I was playing chess with a mate of mine and, and I didn't I totally did not know he was a chess player. And like him and I have been ch playing chess. And then he goes to me, and goes, oh, um, yeah, I was the um, I was a uh, under uh, I was a junior grandmaster. And I was like, what? No wonder you've destroyed me seven times in a row. I was like, normally I'm kind of good, but you just kind of wiped me. And he was just like, yeah, sorry, I forgot to tell you I was a junior. And I was just like, and this guy is, there's, you know, you just go, what? 
So, you know, oh, I, 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 th I think what it's done is it's, it's made us kind of discover more about people, more yeah. about each other. Absolutely. And I, I also think it's, you know, what I, what I really respect about the television series that we're coming that are coming out, perhaps even more than, you know, theatrical cinema is that there's been a real focus on trying to create quality. Right. Yeah. And Queen's Gambit is a great example of that. It's just such a compelling story at so many levels. It's so beautifully acted. It doesn't try to dumb it down for you. Um, it, it tries to lift you up, right? In terms of, of if it's if it's dialogue, in terms of its characters, and certainly in terms of chess. I mean, you know, chess is <laughs> you're going to make a superhero movie out of chess, right? Yeah. Um, but they've made it so relatable, uh, and it's again with a great and uplifting ending. It's not a series that is not without its highs and lows, but it, it's a great uplifting ending, and and. I just, you know, again, you, you turn turn off the last episode and you're like, fuck, that's cool. And I sometimes wish, George, that like watch brands would do a little bit more of that as well. It's like, dude, just don't try to design shit with like a committee of dudes. Yeah. Just get one guy, which is why your stuff, you know, works so well and and who's super passionate and is geeked out about it. And he understands parameters, maybe in terms of cost, but let him just do whatever the fuck he wants. Right. Because so like like the aqua racer that you're wearing, is that is that what I, is, is that what I see there? Right. I think that's a very good example of that, because, you know, like the Aqua Racer, we don't immediately think of that as being a super sexy watch. Right. Yeah. But but that watch came out and everyone was like, that's all. Everyone was like that. That watch is fucking sexy, you know, and that can only happen when like there's people or at least one person that's super passionate about it and sees it right away. And just you just let him do it. Right. You know, and, and maybe, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that since you're the guy that created it. For me, it was just the ultimate tool watch. That's all I wanted out of this was I wanted something that, you know, if you think about tool watches, you know, they really are tell the time and live on your wrist that you don't care about. Don't care about that. They get beaten up. You don't have to polish them. They're not made of gold. They're not, you know, titanium. It's lightweight. Um, you know, that for me was the thing. I don't want a bezel that I'm kind of concerned that I may you know, go diving and it chip it or whatever. You know, this was the, everything about this was very much, I want to go and do anything in it. I want to go up, you know, the Swiss Alps cycling with Way and try and fall off the cliff and the watch still survives. I may not, but the, the watch would survive. You know, that was my whole kind of thing was, I was just like, I wanted something that it literally was my answer to every other tool watch was to just like actually taking Tag Heuer and saying, the Aqua Racer is the tool watch in it. And it's pulling it back to that, that kind of like, yeah, you can go surfing, you can go diving, you can go, you can go to a rock band and it doesn't matter. Dude. I, and I would say, you know, kudos to uh, Fred, uh, Frederick yeah. Arno um, and to Catherine and to you for recognizing the need for that and, and then seeing it through. And I have to say um, Tag Hoyer in general did a really good job this year. You know, I think oh, yeah. really, and you can see that there's like one dude at the head of that company who's super geeked out about his. He's just going like this. Yeah, exactly. And he's and he's super. You know, he's in the matrix and he's just he's loving it, right? Um, and and but it's funny. I want to talk to you a little bit about that because there are certain watches that I you wear and you love, but they also give you anxiety. So this would be. Oh yes, yes. I saw this on your your social media the the well, other day, and I was well, like, I to, yeah, that that would scare me. Yeah, because, you know, I had to bust it out because it was Christmas, right? I was going to meet my parents, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to end up probably doing tequila shots and, you know, blow with hookers. So, it's like, you know, so it should be fine. Um, but it's funny, like, it's 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 probably the watch I treasure the most, probably also because, you know, it was allocated to me. Um, and it was quite funny because... Uh, one of the guys who works in Paddock here in Singapore, he used to be in the special orders um, division or department, right? And he actually um, brought the request from Patrick Kremer to um, Terry Stern uh, wow. for this watch. And it, and it said something along the lines of like, you know, Wei Ko has seen this watch, uh, this bronze Zal 5970 on Nick Falk's wrist, and he has requested one. And and um, it was quite funny because he, it, it's, a, it, it's a problem for Paddock because they have too many order, too many people that yeah. want to buy these things. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like the Snoopy, like on a much, you know, different, different type of watch. But there's, I was asking the boutique in Singapore, they have 2000 people in Singapore that want to buy um, a Snoopy, you know, 50th anniversary. But anyway, and so, Apparently Terry was like, oh, and he was like, 
well, if it's for him, you know, okay. And I remember him, you know, when he allocated it to me, it was a real, like, I felt like I'd arrived at the big kids table some more, the, the big boys table somehow, you know, um, as a journalist, not, not as anything else. But, but it also gives me anxiety because, you know, George, you know me, I, I, you know, I'm a drunken fool, right? And I uh, like, so I, I like to no. exercise a lot, but I like to drink a lot as well. And then, uh, and so I don't want to have it on when I'm doing like, you know, experiments in Negroni or martini making because you, you don't know what's going to happen, right? And so for that, um, I would say the watch that I've been wearing probably the most this year is probably the Black Bay uh, 58 Navy. So that, you know. Yes, yeah. And it's just the perfect, I don't want to say tool watch because I still feel it feels a luxury watch. Uh, it's probably, it's, you know, it's like three and a half thousand US dollars, something like that, you know, like, but it's still... <laughs> But that's the thing. So for me, that is a tool watch. You think right. of the original way that is a tool watch, but you're you're that's kind of you're looking at it on two worlds. You're now saying it's luxury or it's tool, and this is where I'm kind of like, well, where you know if you know where is the Land Rover Defender of watches? You know, I know that's, that's Zenith, but where's the where's the thing where you know you you see Defenders, you see Defenders in Singapore, and you go, God, that guy's you know, going off roading. He's not. He's in Singapore. He's not. He's you know. He's not going out to Johor or somewhere like that. Going off roading. But the thing he's is, he, he's covered the, the entire interior gasket. But the <laughs> thing is, you you know that that guy is going to be having some love with off roading in some way, and Absolutely. that's where I think a watch needs to kind of go back to actually saying this is this is where it sits, and that's where you know you go. I I love that watch because I love beating it around. And I love this watch because you can beat it around, but it's 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 matte titanium. So you, who cares? It's it's going to be beaten around. You know, when you're talking about brands, um, and I'm sorry to digress away from this watch, so, but the brands that did some knockout blows, and this is where I was thinking, you know, when I said to you about some brands that were sleeping, some brands that were awake, you know, I look at things like Zenith, I, you know, I think Julien really knocked it out of the park. I think he did an am amazing job. You know, and then you look at, you look at, um, you, you mentioned, um, you know, I think IWC did a good job. Breitling did a good job. Uh, you know, both of them did, did something where you're like, wow, this is something different. Davide, um, uh, uh, Mont Blanc, I think there was, you know, people were doing stuff that you were going, actually, this is really, really cool. I, I don't know what you think. I, I'd also probably say Panerai is in there as well. I 100% to say Panerai is in there. So it's quite funny because they lent me a watch because they, they were like, um, hey, can we, because I was like, hey, I really like this watch. Can you, you know, lend it to me? And they're, they're like, well, what do you want to do with it? And I was like, I want to do a bunch of different sports in it. <laughs> right. So, so far I've only done, gone on the treadmill with it on, but it's the, uh, you know, Luna uh, Rosa. Uh, oh, that one. Yeah. I saw it on your social media too. I was like, that is such a badass watch. It's, and it's amazing because it's so light as well. Like it's, so it's like, it's like a titanium, but it's like a 3d printed titanium. And it's like the, 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 it's incredible. Uh, it feels so amazing on your wrist, but there's another brand I wanted to talk to you about as well, because it's funny, like, like it's not, I know sometimes I like to, to buy something and wear it. It's kind of because like, no one's going to be like, oh, that's the cool thing to have. It's kind of, they're going to be like, huh, you know? But for me, like the watch is absolutely killer. And I think kind of points the way where the brand is headed or headed back to, and kind of talks to me a little bit about the management of the brand as well, who I really respect. And that brand is Gerard Perigo. And I know you made a sick ass freaking ghost. Yeah, Laureata, right? Like, dude. So, so how dope is that? Like, cause I, you're you've got, you know, you're a watch dude. And I'm a watch dude. And we both got GPs, right? And yeah. I and I, I love the ghost. And I and I probably would have been in the market for it if I hadn't ordered this, which is the Laureato you, um, absolute, you know, chrono, uh, carbon yeah. glass, right? Do you know I I I I would say to you is that this is as you said, direction of a head, there is some good head, uh, there's a good head there. And, you know, GP and Ulysses Nardin have got a really good head above them. Uh, you know, it was, it, it's, it's a treat. I mean, they moved quickly to do this. You know, this for me is the, the, 
what would I say? I, I, this was my, you know, if I say tool watch, this is kind of my unisex kind of great that anyone could wear it, you know, J12 esque because of the white ceramic, but I love the idea of the ceramic. I love the idea, you know, I, this for me, I would love to, it was inspired where, where we, we went 45 years of the Laureate, but then I would also say is I love the um, Omega Alaska project. I loved when it was that white dial with the red that, you know, and I, I also that. say, I, you know, those are things where it inspired me, where I was like, frick, I love that. So, you know, this was one of those that I was just like, and, you know, you've got a very, very good head there. You know, you look at this watch and I've got it on the rubber strap. So I, I haven't got it on the ceramic strap. I've got it on the rubber strap. Now it's snowing outside and, and I'm going to be, I'm going to have a photograph of this in the snow because I'm just going to be like, you know, the white on white with that black, it's just going to look amazing. Now I will, you asked me, what have I been brought for Christmas? What was my kind of ultimate present for Christmas? Well, my yes. wife, my wife has been looking for this watch. I've been looking for this watch. And anyway, I got it uh, this Christmas. Dude, that's sick. <laughs> that's amazing. Wow. That's so cool. So I, as I said to you last time we spoke, I said I was a bit of a magpie and I love kind of weird and wonderful. For me, this is one of those that was my weird and wonderful watch that. You know, I've I've got to set it up right. You know, I've got to put the I've got to change the battery. Uh, I'm going to take the case back off, but I didn't dare do it this Christmas because my wife was like, "This has taken me too long to find this, so don't you dare take it to bits. Give it to the watchmaker." <laughs> so anyway, that was my kind of um, that was my uh, Christmas present. But I agree with you about GP. It, it, I think that they've they've done like Zenith. I mean, when I look at these brands that. You know, there's some great history with these brands. You think of the history and, you know, for a long time they got usurped by other brands. And now they're kind of going, hey, who's the daddy? And, yeah, totally. you know, and I feel like that's what's happened. And I look, at, I look at both those brands and I'm like, they're just literally going, yeah, we're here. We're here and, you know, we're playing, we're playing with the best deck of cards and just, just, just so you you watch us, we're all kind of talking about one square that's a social media box. So we're going to play with that box so hard that m equals all of us. Doesn't matter how much money or how big you are, we've got one square and that's what you're on. Absolutely. You know, I have to say a lot of that, and, and, and I have to say a big fan of Zenith as well. Um, you know, actually in January, we was, you know, it seems so long ago, but we launched the um, CoverGirl Revival uh in january i should be wearing it now sorry i i i, I'm, oh, it, I, oh. I do you know it is one of mine i saw it on um james marx's wrist um a few a few weeks ago and he was just like i have to wear this since the sale of the uh, on uh at auction of the uh, of the original and oh, i was like cool. yeah you know and 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 it was just one of those things where you're just like it's so cool it's if you know you know yeah, absolutely. But, you know, I would say with both um, Zenith and with Jura Perigo, uh, it's Julian and Patrick as well. I mean, these guys yeah. are very dynamic leaders. They're fearless, but they're smart. And they're, they, you know, like you said, this year you saw them really, really moving, you know. So yeah. it's kind of interesting because I think the prevailing feeling was that um, the entrenched brands grew, but others didn't. But I wouldn't say that's completely true. Of course, you know, Rolex grew. And actually, Rolex did an amazing job this year. You know, I think uh, the obviously the the sub, but I think the colorful OP dials um, blew everyone away, uh, and and were such a you know value proposition. Obviously, Omega with the the, the silver Snoopy fiftieth, um, and Paddock, of course, being because they're Paddock. <laughs> but but then yeah, GP did an amazing job this year. Panerai, you, I agree, did an amazing job this year. Uh, um, uh, Zenith did an amazing job, and a, a, whole, a whole host of independents did super well yeah. also. I was speaking to um, everyone from the Gronenfeld brothers to um, my friend Pierre Jack from Debethune. And it's like, oh, yes. yeah, people are buying independent watches more than ever. And I want to ask you, you know, um, George, why do you think there's, there's kind of a revival for independent watchmaking now? Oh, why is a revival? Um, you know, so one other person I, we didn't say, and I, and I said his name wrong on my, uh, on my uh, GB asks was um, Francois from uh, AP. 
Um, I think yeah. AP did some good, some amazing things this year. Oh, you know, yeah. you know, you think about their ceramic, you think about the things that they did. Um, yeah, Independence, what? The they did the forty mm one was. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. you know, when we when I said to you, gangster move, I mean, like that really is the kind of like literally just like here we have just dropped the mic. It's like <laughs> and and you just hear the mic just going bang, 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 bang. Um, Honestly, when you talk about independence, I look at independence like vintage and people want to be different. Yeah. You know, why have I why have I been looking for this? Yeah. Because it's different. I know Nick is going to take the piss out of me because he will, because he'll go, why did you buy that versus this? But I like it because it's mine and it says me. It says totally. about me. And I think the same with independence. I think it is that thing of like, what what do you what do you want and i and and i think the independence make that voice work you know make you be an individual you know you've talked about three major brands you know you've got patek rolex um and you know tudor you know but the thing is you're you're basically putting on the same shirt as everyone else you know and that that that's why you know, I look at it and go, okay, great. You know, that's amazing. Why, why can't you be different? You know, if you've got a, if you've got that amount of money or you've got that amount of whatever, be get an independent, get a limited edition that you know, Way Co has put his money where his mouth is and done a limited edition. You know, put your money where that is because you know it's your selection, it's your part, and it kind of becomes that thing of like. Hey, I'm part of a small club. You know, I've I've brought another watch. This. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> Dude, have you seen the 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 like the the prices on Chrono Twenty Four? Like they're. I can't believe it. I, it's. It, but I tell you one thing. I I I actually, I I nicked my wife's one because hers is mint, 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 oh, and I loved how G-Shock did, designed my packaging. Cause I was like, look, we've got to be an ode to the, the, the metal box. Yes. Um, you know, my wife was a bit kind of like, I can't believe that you're, you're bringing this along to your, your meeting. But, I, <laughs> but the thing where I look at it, you know, that was one of those things where that's different. You know, when you look at it, oh. it, it is, it's such a different type of, idea it's a different watch and you know you wear it the amount of people i see on their wrist same with the john mayer one you yeah. know you kind of go these one these watches just make people smile yeah and i think that's the thing and differences you know i, I think when we first spoke i looked at watches cars and everything and i looked at them being worth nothing when we first spoke was the start of lockdown and I looked at everything and I looked at the value of everything and I thought it's all worth nothing. We can't trade it. We can't do anything. Yeah. We're going to be hitting this huge recession. We're going to, life is going to stop at the moment. Boom, 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 boom. And I thought, am I happy with what I've got? And, and that was one of those things where I looked at everything and it makes me smile. And I think everyone else has gone through the same. Some people have gone, Hey, I'm going to sell everything. Other people have gone, I'm going to buy everything. And, and, and other people have gone, actually, I love what I've got, you know, and what would I add to it? Well, I'd add something that just makes me smile or, or actually makes me giggle, you know, and, you know, put this on. And, you know, for me, this is what I call a fuck you watch because it's, it, you can't get it. Now I yeah. hate, I, you know, this was the largest limited edition I've ever done as a business. I don't know the numbers. Cassio have been very reluctant to tell me the numbers. But what I was told was this was a, a good run for Casio. So it was a good good run of their, their limited edition. Yes. And it sold out in three minutes. Amazing. Now, I, I, and I was just like, I was so sad that people missed out on it. I mean, the messages from people saying, oh, my God, you know, I'd love to. I was like, this is unreal. But I think that's the cool thing. You know, you've got one and so many people have got one that I, I can't. But it's the same with some other watches. You look at some other great watches. You think about the ones you've launched this year. You know, there has been some amazing ones that people have just gone boom, boom, boom. And they're wearing it with pride. You're seeing on social media, you're seeing, 
oh my god that's this that's that and you're like going that's awesome well okay so this kind of brings me to something that i wanted to discuss with you so it's something we're working on for next year um and maybe there could be a way a possibility for us to collaborate on it but basically what this year has taught me is that uh, it's you know it's, it's great if you can earn a living doing this business, but it, you, you should, it's our, everyone's responsibility to find some way to give back. Right. So yeah. um, oh, yeah. Andrew did an amazing job with um, time and tide uh, and the Australian bushfire auction. Um, we, you know, we jumped in with the, the COVID solidarity auction, but I'd like to like try to do something every year. And I came up with this idea called the pink dial project. Um, and, right. <laughs> And the Pink Dial Project is basically um, a charity auction of unique pieces where we, we ask brands to, to create one watch with a pink dial. And uh, these watches are sold uh, on a charity auction to benefit breast cancer in October, which is Breast Cancer uh, a month, uh, Awareness Month. Um, and, you know, and it's something that, that's meaningful to me because my mom had breast cancer. But I think the, the most important thing is everyone finds it universally appealing because we all hate cancer, but we all love breasts. Right. So, and, and I was thinking it would be kind of cool to have um, a watch that was kind of like uh, a watch that, you know, not a super expensive watch, but a watch you could buy that kind of went along with that. And maybe a portion of the proceeds could kind of go to that charity. So if you ever want to, if you might want to do something like this, but like in a pink color way, like, or black and pink, like that could be really fun. And we could do donate a, a portion of it to that charity too. Right. Cassio, please help me on this one. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, look, I would say to you as I'm in, I'm in, um, I, um, Casio, it may work. It may not work. I would say to oh, you is we, we, we've got a new watch we're launching next year that may be a watch that's part of this. Um, this is our own watch. Um, and also, you know, we've also got. This little fella for next year. We, we may have something along the lines of, of them, but not collect. So there may be something else. Um, but what I would say to you is, yeah, pink. I, I'm, I'm in. I, what, what I can do, yes, I, I'd love to be a part of it. Um, you're saying proceeds, let's do proceeds. But actually, you know, I'll also do a unique piece for you on something. Um, and you and I can come, come up with the idea of what you'd like. Um, we could we could even look at I'll look at potentially making a one off watch that would be you know even a unique case that would be quite fun. Um, we'll have some fun. Look, honestly, that's what I want to do. Is I've realised in life if we're not smiling, if we're not you know if we're not having fun, then what the hell are we doing? So you know that would be one of those things. And you know I'm you know I've shown you some fun watches that I've enjoyed this year. Most of them were kind of created this year. The, the only one that wasn't was the Casio G-Shock because that takes, you know, from with Casio, it takes a little while. It takes uh, about a year to create a watch. Um, sure. But I love, do you know, I love working with them. I love working with brands that have just gone, hey, let's do something and let's, let's surprise people. Nice. And that's that. That's what I think has been the interesting thing, and that's what this year has been about. You know, you you're saying about what's delighted me this year, social media. You think about Matt Matt uh, from um, uh, you know Matt Hendrick. W M Brown. Um, yeah, um, and you know you think about all the people with Negronis. Every time I see a Negroni, uh, you know I'm like, <laughs> oh my god. There's the guy, and I, I, I'm having a real dyslexic moment, but the guy that says it's Friday and the video of him dancing every Friday is just one of the coolest things ever. You know, uh, there's just so many things that social media has just gone, yeah, this is cool. You know, Dis Common actually going out and just playing in his car. Um, you know, there's just people that you go, oh, yeah, actually they're doing something. Um, I've got a mate that just has been uh, climbing the Himalayas and going up there and you just go and he keeps on just sending me images and you're just like, yeah, why not? Amazing. George, what is the one thing you can tell us about that, what, that, that you want to do when, you know, the vaccine is implemented, uh, everything goes back to normal. What's, what, what's the first thing you'd like to do? So last time I said hug, I, I want to hug people and, 
And, you know, I want to I want to high five and handshake and hug people. And honestly, I do. But I want to high five and handshake and hug people in other countries. I want to go and see places. I, you know, I've, I've got an obsession. I want to go to Ethiopia and go to Lalabal. That's the these uh, churches that are buried underground. Um, so for me, that's one of my bucket lists. I want to go surfing in uh, uh, yeah, Byron Bay. I want to go there. Uh, I just I, I don't know why I've just I've got two places that are really on my bucket list. Uh, but really, it's actually hanging out, seeing you going to Singapore and actually having a different meal, having a different meal that is not cooked by me or, or a delivery company, but actually a meal where we, we're doing something different, you know, and and shooting the shit in another way, you know. Absolutely. I, what about you? What what do you what do you want to do? I'm just going to get onto a plane to start traveling the world, man. You know, yeah. I can't wait to do that again. Um, and but at this time, appreciate it a lot more. You know, like in the past, it was kind of like, oh yeah, I'm going to London or I'm going to Florence or I'm going to whatever, and it'd just be like, you know, okay, it's part of the routine. No, I think I, I really like to appreciate um, every moment now and that opportunity. Um, it, because you're right, like, and to use the analogy that you first mentioned in the beginning of, of this, you know, we are um, like on a series of switchbacks on the world's longest climb, and we are almost at the top, you know, um, and we can't let, uh, we can't relent now. We got to keep going. You can't be like that moment I had where you want to just cycle off the side yeah. of the mountain. We were there and, and we'll get there together. And uh, George, I want to thank you for joining me because uh, you're the you're one of the key guys that's helped me get through this year. And I think you're a, a real inspiration to us all, man. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. And let's, let's go on a switch back together. Absolutely, brother. Take care. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.